be part of the dudes. Hi everybody, welcome back to another ramble. We're here. It is 10.30 in the morning. It is Friday, the 13th of March. My god. What a week. I have had the craziest week. So this is a this is a ramble, but also a little bit of an update. Actually, there's like a couple of updates that I wanted to do. Um, the first one is that I am definitely moving. It's happened for the, for the past six weeks. If you've ever moved before, if you've ever bought a house before, or even an apartment, if you've ever bought an apartment before, uh, you'll probably be able to sympathize a bit here because... Man, what an ordeal. I mean, you have to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that you have to do. You have to talk on the phone a lot with people. Uh, you have to go meet people like at banks and you have to go meet with like lawyers. You have to do all this stuff and you have to read all this really boring stuff. And then people have to like explain really boring stuff to you and you just zone out and you think about other things and you talk on the phone and you eat pudding and play games and don't listen to anyone and whatever. And it all sort of comes to a head in like the last week before it's meant to go through. I'm not sure how it works anywhere else because I've only ever bought property where I live right now in Jersey. Um, and there's two types, like there's two categories of property over here. So there's there's like a shared transfer property, which is what we live in now, which is an apartment. Um, so you're effectively buying shares in a company that owns like the block of the apartments that you live in. Uh, and your part of the shares um, give you title to live in and own the apartment that you that you buy with those shares um so that's where we're at now and that's not something that de that needs to go through court over here so um buying a house is a little bit different which we're doing now we're trying to buy a house um and it has to go through court it's like this formality thing it's like some old some old law or some old thing where uh you they set aside a certain period of time, like on a Friday afternoon, uh, and then you have to turn up with your lawyer to court uh, and sit there and sit through anyone else who's buying a freehold property, which is like the other category of properties, wait for them to call out your name, and then you have to stand up and like hold your right hand up in the air, and uh, after they've done some oath or whatever, you have to solemnly swear that you're not Hitler or something, and it's it's kind of crazy. It it's it's kind of weird, but I mean at the same time it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it because it's a bit of an experience. But um, there's still so much stuff um, pending, <laughs> like approval, leading up to it, and it's actually like, it's happening really soon. Like it's happening in a couple of hours. So it may not happen. <laughs> it's like a bit of a cliffhanger, sort of like on the on the seat of my edge of my seat, seat of my pants, um, skin of my teeth here, but. Um, we'll see. Hopefully it goes through and then hopefully um, everything will sort of fall into place and, and whatever. So part of the update, um, after all that really boring stuff about buying houses and stuff like that, um, is that for the next, well, if everything goes through and everything sort of sails through according to plan, um, the next couple of weeks are going to be a bit touch and go. Um, I'll, I will try my best, obviously, to get uh, the whammies that have been going out because they've been great. It's been really nice to pick up so many great games and play them. I'm really lucky right now. I'm playing four games that I, I absolutely love. Uh, and putting out the content is really great. But with moving, and again, if you've ever moved before, um, I mean, we haven't even started packing or anything yet. So it's like, pff, what the hell? What, where do we even start? What the hell are we going to do? Um, I've got a young child as well that I have to like convince to leave the only house he's ever known and move into a new one and stuff. So I have to like find some bargaining tools for that and just a whole bunch of other stuff. So next, probably the next three weeks might be a little bit um, sort of touch and go. So, you know, on some days there might just randomly not be a video. There might just randomly be one video instead of two or whatever. Uh, but then once we've moved in and once we're settled in and we get into like that nice routine and everything, again, if you've ever moved before, you'll probably know that the worst part about moving is that in-between phase where you're not fully sort of settled into the place that you've always lived in. And of course, uh, in the process of moving, you're, you're nowhere near settled into the new place that you're getting into. So it's that like sort of no man's land in between that's always very sort of uh, frustrating and uh, you can't wait to get it over with so that you can just like sit down and, you know, watch like 20 episodes of House of Cards in one evening on your couch in your underpants. So that's, I mean, that is the goal. 
Um, so when I get to that point, um, that'll be great. And then everything will be back on track. Uh, and there'll be double whammies and occasionally triple whammies. Uh, if, you know, there's an evening with Sips with doing or if something else crops up or whatever, more Overwatch news, wh whatever is, is on at the time. Uh, and then, of course, the sort of big four, which is City Skylines, um, Grim Fandango, Fallout, the original, and uh, Hotline Miami 2, which so far is awesome uh, really hard too my god just like so frustrating um but there you go this week also my god i've spent so much time playing gta 5 heists now that they're out uh, with hat films which has been amazing fun it's so much fun it's really really it's really satisfying really satisfying completing one as well you get a role uh, and if your role is interesting and you manage to like um <laughs> you know, contribute to the rest of the team. There's one episode that went up on their channel where I did nothing. I sat in the back of a bus the whole episode, just like everything was in hand and I couldn't really do anything. So um, I got paid for it too, which is really nice. Actually, that's probably the best pay. The best time uh, or the best way to get paid is for doing absolutely nothing. I mean, they say nothing in life is free, but I mean, getting paid for doing nothing is as close as you're ever going to get. And also, if you've ever had the luxury of ordering 30 minutes or it's free pizza and the pizza turned up well over 30 minutes and you got it for free, that is the best pizza you'll ever have in your life. Like, it'll just taste so good because it'll be dripping not only with, like, the herbs and spices that they season the pizza with, but also just with just pure, unadulterated satisfaction. That's right. My God. There's no nothing like it. You cannot beat it. And I almost just choked uh, on, I don't even know, my own tongue or probably spit. So there you go. Um, yeah. So in terms of updates, I think I think that's about it. I've sort of wrapped two updates into one. It was the, the moving bit, which is going to cause some sort of uh, friction with the channel. And then, of course, um, the three weeks after with moving and stuff like that, where things might be touch and go. Um, on the topic of the channel, and I just want to say, I did a ramble, it was, was it last month that I did it? Was it the start of last month, start of February? I think it was. Start of February, I sort of turned around and I said, I don't really like the way my channel is going right now. Um, I was putting out Gary's Mod videos very, very, very regularly, because at the time it was the only thing that we were really playing uh, together, uh, and it was fun. Um, and the videos were doing really well. I mean, you look if you look back, you know, the views on those videos, great. You know, everything was, was going really well. Uh, they were consistent. The same people seemed to be tuning in every day to watch them or whatever. But as I said last month, um, there were elements of it that I really didn't like. I didn't like the toxicity in the, in the comment section. Um, people were asking me to go back to doing things the way that I used to do them. Uh, because they miss that. A lot of people um, who had stuck around for a long time or been following my channel for a long time um, had decided to leave because they just weren't interested anymore because they weren't interested in, in, the, in the gameplay aspect and they weren't interested in the content format. And, and that's fine. I mean, it, it's inevitable in a lot of ways that it is going to happen on YouTube. Um, but there were other things happening as well. Like my uh, my actual subscriber growth was affected. It wasn't was nowhere near as high as it used to be. And I mean, I I realized that uh, when we were doing tech it and stuff like that, we were really sort of we that was probably the peak for us. Um, well, certainly for me, I, I don't think my channel's ever done better. Um, it was just a really exciting mod pack at the time. It was very popular. It's very it made for very popular content on YouTube as well. We were just everywhere. I mean, you couldn't front page of YouTube and stuff. We were always on there for some reason, um, all of our tech videos and stuff like that. And uh, back then, I mean, it, things just went crazy. Like, I mean, we were just getting like thousands and thousands of new subscribers a day. Um, our views were just going crazy and stuff. And it was it was exciting. It was a really fun time to be doing all this. And then, of course, I mean, like any YouTube channel, you sort of peak and then you um, you decline a little bit and then you sort of plateau at like at a consistent place and then there's like sort of steady growth but you never get that like uh, rocketing growth that you get when you sort of become really sort of popular at the time if you're doing something that happens to be popular or, or whatever it's kind of the way it works um, so I mean sub sub growth had just completely bottomed out there was not, not nothing to write home about uh, in those terms and it just kind of felt 
like a job. Like it, 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 which is a shame, really, because this should never feel like a job, in my opinion. I mean, we've all got this great opportunity where we can play games and we can make a living off of actually playing games. It's my hobby. I mean, I go home in the evenings after a full day of playing games and I play more games most of the time <laughs> if I'm not doing something like with my family or whatever. Um, you know, oftentimes I'm playing Diablo or playing WoW or <laughs> last night I played Heroes of the Storm for a bit and, um, you know, City Skylines I've been playing regularly, sort of every night, just farting around with my cities and stuff like that. It's definitely my hobby. It's always been my hobby, playing games, um, and just so lucky to be doing it for a job as well. Uh, but it was starting to feel like a job. It was starting to feel like every day was coming in. And as fun as it was to record Gary's Mod, and it was as fun as it was to do that sort of content format, um, you can't help but sometimes feel like, uh, we've done this. You know, this is the same thing or whatever. And it, it's it's still funny. The banter is always funny. And the group dynamic is, is always great because it's great to hang out with your friends and have a laugh or whatever. But it, it just never felt like we were sort of getting anywhere. And I... I got to the point where I was missing that sort of progression in in games. You know, I was missing a game surprising me or just like thrilling me or making me laugh or whatever, even though I did get a lot of laughs out of Gary's Mod, but it wasn't the game delivering the, the laughs. It was the situations that the game created, not like something like Grim Fandango where, you know, the actual dialogue itself is so funny and well written that it just makes you burst out laughing. And I've done that many times in Grim Fandango because it is so well written. Um, so, so there was something missing and, and it was great. And I, I sort of, I came on here, I, I, I did a ramble and I said, I, I just want to go back to how it used to be. I want to go back to how my channel used to be where I was playing games, we were hanging out and we were just having fun. And I, I really truly now feel like we're back. We are back there, and it feels really good. I, I've, I've never been happier doing this um, as I am now. Every day I'm on Reddit. Every day I'm checking the, the comment section. The toxicity is, like, completely gone. Uh, it, it's uh, amazing. It's just like a, like a brush sweep across, like, a piece of paper, and it's gone. It's, everybody is upbeat. Everybody is excited. Everybody is talking about stuff that's happening in the videos. Everybody's talking about stuff that they're looking forward to or, you know, other games that people want me to play and stuff like that. Uh, the, the subreddit is great. There's no more long sort of drawn out complaint threads and where people are chipping in saying that they're unhappy and stuff like that. Everybody seems to be on, you know, following all the series and some people don't have time to follow all of them so they're just picking and choosing. But it's nice because there's just gonna be a, a big back catalog of stuff there. You know, when, when one series finishes, you might think, eh, hey, maybe I will go back and watch Grim Fandango or, or Fallout or whatever. And that's great. That's, it's, so, it's so good. I, I love the way that it all works, and I'm so glad that everybody seems to be happy again. I'm certainly happy again, and I feel like, I feel like we've done it. I feel like we've just turned it around. Um, Subgrowth is back up, too. We're, lots of new subscribers coming in off the back of like City Skylines, which just launched and is excellent. Um, and Hotline Miami, too. A lot of new people just sort of coming out up out of nowhere because they've just seen these videos about a game that they like, and decided to subscribe, so that's great. And I think we're just gonna keep going this way. We'll just keep having lots of regular series, um, try to keep it as varied as possible. I think what's really working n nicely right now too is that the genres of games are all different. So like we have Fallout, which is sort of like a role play game uh, and pretty open-ended too. I mean, you can do anything you want in it. I mean, I made the mistake of making my character so dumb that he can't have conversations with people. <laughs> so. That's, um, that's a little bit testing at times, but we're getting there. Um, through the miracle of drug abuse, we are slowly, slowly getting there, so that's great. Uh, Grim Fandango is just a very story-driven game uh, filled with puzzles that stump you forever, um, like they have been with me, but you get these great moments of satisfaction where you finally manage to figure something out completely randomly and progress it through, and the story is so far very good. It's very well written. It's a classic um, LucasArts adventure game, which has been remastered and is now available. I mean, it wasn't available before, and that's the big thing that people miss when um, they look at it being remastered. A lot of people are like, what is it? It's, it's not remastered at all. It's the same game, but you have to remember that it was impossible to play that game uh, before the remastered version came out and is so easily sort of launchable on Steam. You don't have to get a whole bunch of cracks and hacks and stuff to, to get it working in like some DOS emulator or whatever when Grim Fandango came out. 
so that's great. City Skylines, of course, City Builder, completely different to all the other ones. And then Hotline Miami, Miami 2 is like a fucking intense arcade game, uh, uh, which I spend hours upon hours just swearing at myself because I'm so frustrated because I suck so bad at it. I forget to lock on to the enemies. I forget to do shit. Uh, I completely misinterpret the goals of each level. The levels are much bigger this time around, so you get shot at a lot more randomly and you have to restart and stuff. But it's awesome. I wouldn't have it any other way because uh, part of the fun of Hotline Miami is um, becoming yourself insane, doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result every time when you just end up getting killed like completely randomly. You, might, you know, you kill one more guy than you did last time and then some other dude just busts out of a door somewhere and knocks you over and shoves a knife through your eye and kills you or whatever. Um, but it's awesome. And again, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's just... So great. So I think um, I think we'll do that too. I think we'll make sure that the genres are nice and varied up as well, so that there's a bit of everything for everyone. I think that works. I mean, it's it it spreads things a little bit thin sometimes, but I'm 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 just ignoring stats. I, I I mean, I still look at them from time to time because you have to. I mean, I do make a living off of this, and I do have to sort of keep keep up with stuff like that. But I'm not really using the stats for anything anymore. I'm not making any assumptions based on stats as to what people want to watch and stuff like that. I'm purely going by feedback now. So I'm just looking at comments and I'm just looking at Reddit feedback to see what people like and, and what they don't. And if something gets one view or if something gets 100,000 views, I don't really mind. As long as somebody out there is enjoying it, that's, that's good enough for me. And everything else is, is going fine. So it's, it's probably not worth worrying about. Uh, and it's just nice to sort of keep up this positive momentum and keeping everybody sort of happy and excited about stuff and everything. And it is it is very good. And it's, it, it makes things a lot more fun for me a, as well. So so that's great. So um, uh, in terms of updates, I think that's about it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a ramble and some of it was like a little bit sort of, well, I don't know, like serious, serious business, I guess. Kind of? Is it like serious business? I'm not sure. Um, the, the GTA heists, if, you've, if you play GTA 5 on whatever console you play it on and heists are available, um, what do you think of them? I personally, I think that they're really good. I think I liked the whole heist thing in the single player GTA. I liked how you had to like, you know, get into a, an, a, in a room in an apartment and put up a billboard thing and uh, you know, plan it all out, and you had to go like you know, knock off trucks to get the gas masks uh, and and the and the jumpsuits or whatever, and you you know, you had to do all this stuff. And I feel like the multiplayer one is a, a really good extension of that. I think the only thing I don't really like about the multiplayer one, which is a kind of weird thing to not like about it, is all the story elements in it. And I know that you kind of need them to make things more exciting or whatever, but I think some of the cutscenes and everything are a little bit long-winded. Like, especially when you're just, like, with your friends and you're just, like, you want to get into it. You want to do something. Sometimes it's a little bit, like, um, it's, like, throttling the speeds in a way. You're, like, you know, you're, you're breaking into a prison and you're killing a million guys and everybody's super excited. But, uh, and then you have to, like, sit through this cutscene for, like, what seems to be an hour. It's only, like, f five minutes or whatever. But, I, I mean, I... I I appreciate the fact that it's all in there and that there's like some story to it and they explain why you're doing it and stuff like that. And I'm, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and, I, you know, it's all voice acted as well and, and everything. But I'm wondering if, you know, they can't find some way to just release the heist a bit faster and sort of cut out all that stuff. Because, like, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Maybe some other people would. Maybe some people would be like, nah, I really like the cutscenes. I like the being immersed in, in the world or whatever and feeling like I'm doing something and, and stuff. But for me, I think take them out. Um, make it so that you can read it, like, before you're, you know, while the game is loading. I mean, there's ample time while the game is loading at any, <laughs> any point to read stuff. Um, and then just get in there, you know, Show me what I need to do, whatever role I've taken, stuff. Let me pick my masks and stuff. That All that stuff is great. Uh, if you have um, voice comms and you can talk to your friends while you're doing it, even better. It's really exciting. And again, uh, when you do something together with your friends and you accomplish something, holy shit, the satisfaction. I mean, we were here. I was here like super late yesterday because we were recording uh, these heists. I was recording them with Hat Films. And... They, it took forever because we had to retry them a couple of times. Some of them were trickier than others or whatever. 
And at one point, I screamed so loud that I thought I actually did myself like an injury uh, because we were just we were so glad that we passed it and we got like our awards and our cash and everything. And uh, it's just great. It really is. It really is cool. It's cool to have like that sort of team based, objective based uh, gameplay, but it's not competitive you know it's like it's something that you're doing together but you're not necessarily doing it against other people you're just doing the, these like scripted events or whatever but it's really fun it, it it almost reminds me a little bit of sort of like mini raiding in wow which of course if you've ever done any raiding in wow and you had a group of friends that you raided with was um at its peak very very fun i mean i haven't really done any serious raiding um recently but this this felt similar you know everybody had to sort of pull their weight at various points and do stuff and it it was just really interesting you know when people would fail at something and you know everybody be like oh come on okay let's just try again it's fine just you know make sure you do this next time or whatever and you get that like teamwork and you get that that sort of sense of achievement with your friends and everything and I think it's great. I think it's really, really good. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other heists. I think that they came... I think that there's three four-player heists. And I think that there was the two two-player heists, right? That's what they launched with. But I don't know what their plans are going forward for launching more. I don't know how often we can expect to see new heists or whatever. Um, the payouts are really good, too. Wow. I mean, just from doing one heist with the like the bonus money that you get from it? My God. Make, made like so much money i can almost afford like a better apartment than like the crummy one i'm in now although saying that kind of like my crummy apartment so maybe i'll i'll keep it it's it's a weird thing isn't it the fact that you can buy property in gta you know the fact that you can buy multiple properties in gta as well makes it <laughs> maybe a little bit more interesting but sometimes like the first place that you buy in a game like gta is the place that you just get attached to like you don't feel like you really want to buy another place because you're just really used to wear everything you don't live there <laughs> it's like a virtual house but it's just got like the same sort of like effect on you doesn't it where you just think eh, i like this <laughs> i'm not gonna move i'm just gonna buy a whole bunch of other garages so that i can store like a bunch of weird octopus vans in them and stuff like that but it's all good. It's fun. It's a really fun game. It's something that I've been playing a lot more recently. Um, the, the weird thing with GTA is that sometimes uh, when I really feel like playing it, like in the evenings and stuff, because I work from an office, my PlayStation is here. So it, it's a weird thing. Like I have to really feel like playing it to um, pack it up and take it home with me. Like, n normally I'll do that like on a weekend because sometimes I just get the urge to, to jump in and you know, hold up a convenience store or whatever. Um, but it, it, I have to really feel like doing it because I'm lazy. And of course, packing up a PlayStation and putting it into a plastic bag and taking the 10 minute walk home carrying that is, of course, just way too much <laughs> strain for me to handle uh, on any given day. Um, so I just sort of like balance it out a bit and think, do I really want to play this this weekend? And if I do, then yeah, take it. And if not, it stays here, oftentimes plugged in and on uh, for an entire weekend. Ross always makes fun of me uh, because he sends me requests over the weekend if he's playing, thinking that I'm playing too. But no, it's just on. <laughs> it's just me logged into. I probably have more game time than, than all of those guys combined for the sheer fact that I leave my PlayStation on all the damn time. And GTA is pretty much running all the damn time, <laughs> whether I'm here or not. Uh, so there you go. Uh, but I mean, of course, my player level doesn't reflect that at all. I'm much lower than the rest of them. I think when it first came out, they hit it pretty hard. They played it a lot. I sort of missed out on that. So like, I haven't really had people to play with uh, regularly, so I haven't been able to level up. It's just the way that it goes. But there's plenty of other games uh, to be playing and stuff as well. GTA is... I don't know. I don't know if I'd play GTA as much as I play other games, but GTA is definitely fun to just jump in uh, when you have like that inkling. Especially if you just want to run over motorcyclists. That's, that, that is something I like to do in that game. For some, anytime I see somebody on a motorcycle, I always try my best to hit them. It's a mean thing to say, and uh, it's probably a, a pretty twisted thing to think as well, but they're just, they're just such easy, easy targets, aren't they? And you just get the satisfaction of watching them launch off of the motorcycle and oftentimes into the side of a building or into like a lamppost or something. And I don't know, the ragdolls and everything in those games is just what makes it, doesn't it? Everything that you do is just so satisfying. Uh, there was something about Diablo 3. Um, 
I, if you're into Diablo 3, I know some of these rambles, I, I, I put uh, Diablo 3 footage in the background. It's likely that today's ramble will have GTA footage in the background. But um, one of the things that there was a really, really interesting um, talk by uh, Josh Mus- Musquera. Musquera. He's, the, he's like the lead guy for Diablo 3 now. He took over from uh, Jay Wilson, I guess. Uh, who who was originally in, in charge of Diablo three? So um, so Josh sort of helped get Reaper Souls uh, out and the console stuff for it and everything as well. I think I think Josh did the console stuff anyway. He gave some hour long talk at uh, at the GDC recently about how they turned the game around. Uh, if you know anything about, I mean, if you don't know anything about Diablo, probably just ignore this part. But um, I mean, Diablo for me is a game that I loved. Uh, I, I loved the first one. I played it a lot. The second one, just I played to death. I just played it so much. I played it years after it was even, you know, it, it just went on and on forever. And it was just such a fun game. I just loved everything about it. And I, I, I did play it to death. So Diablo 3, when it was announced, I was so excited for. I mean, I was looking at all the concept art. I was watching all like the early videos, you know, with like the mage um, slow bubble and everything. I just couldn't believe it. I just thought it looked awesome. Uh, but one thing that he was saying um, is that, um, you know, a lot of people shit on Jay Wilson. They say, you know, what was he thinking? You know, Diablo 3 when it came out was just not very good. Or, you know, there was just so many things wrong with it or whatever. And it took it took them Reaper Souls, uh, the expansion for Diablo 3, the first expansion for Diablo 3, to, to actually make the game good like it, they turned it around big time they removed the auction house they uh they streamlined a lot of like the loot drops and uh the difficulty levels and everything and it is it's awesome now as it is now it is awesome and they they continue to improve it and it's really great um but when it first came out it wasn't so much so a lot of people blame jay wilson for that would you know rightly so i suppose he was the guy who's in charge so he, he should get uh, the blame if things weren't quite right or if things fell below expectation or whatever but um, he was saying that we have Jay Wilson to thank for a lot of things. And one of the things that we have to thank Jay Wilson for, apparently, is the fact that it feels so satisfying when you're just crushing your enemies with, like, these heroes in Diablo, right? So um, the fact that, like, sometimes when you, like, you know, if you use, I don't know, like, uh, Condemn or something like that, and you trigger off an explosion, you know, you'll see all these little bodies flying everywhere and body parts flying everywhere and sprays of blood and stuff like that. And it was that apparently he was like a big sort of um, sort of proponent for that kind of stuff happening. He really pushed for that um, sort of level of polish and he wanted to see that sort of stuff in the game because it made the game feel so much better to play. Like it was just so satisfying when you did things, uh, when you, you know, you kill a big group of monsters, like I said, and things go flying everywhere and everything. And you, it makes you feel more powerful when you're playing the game. Not a lot of games do that. I feel GTA does do that though. I feel like the, just the, the physics of it and the absurdity of some of the situations and stuff. It's not that you feel powerful. It just feels so nice to play. Like the cars handle so well, your character handles fairly well. There's times where the character's do like this weird like uh, running sprint thing when you don't want them to and oftentimes like ends up getting you killed, especially when you're like seeking cover or whatever. But for the most part, the, the controls and everything in GTA are spot on. The handling of cars is, is really, really responsive and amazing. The handling of your character for the most part is really responsive and amazing. And that kind of stuff really helps with the gameplay. And it's stuff that not everybody puts a lot of time and effort into. There's a lot of games out there where you're character just feels like he's just like a cardboard cutout that barely moves and it it doesn't feel like he's part of the world sort of thing but definitely diablo definitely um gta uh, and world of warcraft as well if you've ever played world of warcraft you'll know what i'm talking about your character feels awesome like it just all the abilities the sounds that the abilities make the way that your character moves and stuff is it just feels perfect and it's great and that it's the kind of thing that i mean like i always say to people i i you know, when I play WoW, I'm chatting in Guild and I'm running around Ironforge and stuff like that. But part of the reason why I'm doing that is because it, it the movement and everything is so nice, too. Like, it's, you know, it, it's not this, like, jarring thing where it, it doesn't feel right or whatever. The fact that I can just, like, be running around Ironforge or Stormwind or something and chatting with my friends for, like, hours um, shows that it was worth them putting all that time and effort into, like, sort of making that part of the game it's such a little thing isn't it it's just like such a nerdy thing to get caught up on but 
for me, it, it makes like a huge difference. I don't know. I just, uh, I just really like it. Like Hotline Miami Two is a bit like that too. The controls are just so punchy, aren't they? And like your character moves instantly when you press the buttons and stuff and it's there's no delay or the, and there's no weird like jerkiness or whatever and like when you shoot the gun it just shoots right away and it just feels good like it you know when you watch people doing speed runs of that game uh the first one it's awesome because it's just like such a responsive thing and it's just like this like adrenaline rush we, you know you see somebody just like plowing through these levels at breakneck speeds and stuff and it, oh, it's just awesome i love i love all that kind of stuff anyway <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I always feel the need to apologize for rambling because I feel like I do ramble a hell of a lot. But then again, these are called rambling with sips and we do just that. We have a nice long ramble. Oftentimes, it always seems to come back to Blizzard games, but I hold them dear to my heart. Uh, but um, of course, other great games as well, like GTA and Hotline Miami, which I'm playing. And um, maybe next time we can have like a massive old ramble about City Skylines because it's definitely worth rambling about already. The modding community, holy crap, is is coming to life. You should see some of the stuff on the Steam Workshop already. I mean, if you have the game, take some time and download some of that stuff and like uh, upvote people and everything because they deserve it. Because City Skylines is poised now to maybe possibly um, finally wean people off of SimCity 4, which had... The oh, SimCity 4, oh my god, the stuff that you could do in SimCity 4 thanks to modding was unbelievable. There's like whole communities of people that were devoted to just making SimCity 4 um, the, the best possible game ever. Like there was like um, traffic mods that made the traffic and, and AI for traffic better. There were buildings, there were new buildings that you could get. I mean, you could even make like like seawalls and stuff like along the coast so that it didn't look so like, you know, like where you have a city, normally the city's so built up and normally there are seawalls, but like normally when a city builder launches, no city builder has that as an option for things to build sort of thing. So what you end up with is this m massive metropolis with skyscrapers along a coast, but then no seawalls. It's just like sort of bleeds into the ocean. It doesn't look right. So people modded those into SimC4 as well. And it looks like people are making the same strides already in city skylines. Like one thing that I noticed about city skylines was the farming like industry didn't make fields. It just made little buildings, same as like any other factory, uh, but it never made fields. And one thing that I, I would really like to have is like a sort of uh, rural area of my city that just has farm fields and a couple of little farms and stuff like that. Somebody's already done it. There's a mod for it. There's there's like some tile set mods that you can already download for City Skylines through Steam Workshop, which somebody's just painstakingly made nice fields of apple orchards and stuff like that, that you can just plop down and you can make actual fields you can make it look like there's actual fields so that i mean in the first instance that's probably one worth checking out because i would probably check that one out as well um and it, indeed the, in the playthrough as stuff comes out and stuff is is very good and worth getting i'll incorporate it into it uh because that was the great thing about SimCity 4 in my opinion that the modding was just unbelievable sometimes it was a bit finicky sometimes mods didn't work and sometimes you had to play around with them and stuff like that but i got the sense that a lot of people like doing that too like because in a city builder you just tinker around so what's the difference if you're tinkering inside or outside the game i mean outside of the game if you have to tinker around with files and change things to get them to work and stuff like that it's i guess the same thing as fixing your traffic and stuff in the game so maybe that's the appeal i don't know but anyway it's an exciting time there's lots of games to be playing there's lots of exciting games um out right now last tuesday was just crazy just like every game that i was Put, like potentially looking forward to in 2015 all hit on the same day um and there's a whole bunch of other stuff coming out la later in the year too which is going to be fantastic as well so we'll have to pick those up and play them too all right well that's enough rambling from me um there's not going to be a fallout tonight unfortunately because i just don't have time by the time i get this done um and and everything else uh, fallout is is not going to happen unfortunately so it'll be out next week if you follow fallout i'm really sorry but like I said, the next three weeks are going to be a little bit touch and go. You might be missing episodes here and there, but we'll make up for it uh, once everything is sort of back on an even keel or whatever. Great. Well, uh, send me comments. Keep it going. Keep sending me comments on Reddit. Keep letting me know uh, what you're liking, what you're not liking and stuff like that. Keep leaving comments on YouTube. Keep hitting me up on Twitter and stuff. Um, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep playing awesome games and just having a good time. Uh, and it's going to be 
great. And this will probably be up on iTunes uh, next week uh, when I get back after the weekend. It's Mother's Day. If you live in the UK, it's Mother's Day on Sunday. So don't forget to like kiss your mums for me as well and tell them happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. All right. Well, as usual, thanks very much for watching and um, see you next time. of the